dear students continuing with the chapter of forced vibration this lecture is on response of a rotating unbalanced system i dr balraj singh brad from yadvindra college of engineering talwandi sabo india am presenting the rotating unbalanced system a machine having rotor as one of its components is called a rotating machine like turbines and electric motors unbalance in the system occurs when the center of gravity of rotor does not coincide with the axis of rotation in this lecture by understanding the response we can control the vibration amplitude for such rotating system by selecting suitable mass of the system and introducing a stiffness element and a damping coefficient into the system now let, let us take a rotating unbalanced system where uh, this is the rotating unbalanced system a rotor is rotating anti clockwise with the angular speed of omega and it is having an unbalanced mass m not at eccentricity e which is rotating also rotating along with the rotor at omega let m is the total mass of the system it includes m not now this rotating system is supported by introducing a stiffness element having a net stiffness k and a damping element with a net damping coefficient c suppose we have a certain certain mat which has some which has some stiffness as well as damping properties now due to the m not unbalanced mass which is rotating at angular speed of omega it will introduce a centrifugal force into the system this system, centrifugal force fc is now as per the relation mass m not e radius of rotation omega angular speed of rotation so relation becomes m not e omega square basically this system is constrained and it can move in vertical direction only means this is a single degree of freedom system and its movement can be described by x displacement from an equilibrium position so considering the vertical component of the force fc the vertical component of centrifugal force becomes fcv is m not e omega square sine of this angle omega t omega t is the angle turned by the m not unbalanced system in time t from a horizontal reference line now the differential equation will be m minus m not mass subtracting unbalanced system this is vibrating along the vertical axis and let at any position it is at x and its acceleration is d to x by dt square so this is the inertia force plus inertia for inertia force of an unbalanced system m not we take acceleration of d2 by dt square of its displacement now displacement of m not is equal to this x x i can show x plus this distance now this becomes x plus vertical component of eccentricity which is e sin or sin of omega t so we put x plus e sin omega t spring force is kx 
and damping force is c into velocity which is dx by dt and when we simplify this inertia force of vibrating system is m minus m naught into acceleration x double dot now m naught d2 by dt square of x plus e sin omega t yields to d2 by dt square of x yields x double dot and e sin omega t it yields minus m naught e omega square sin omega t damping force is cx dot spring force is kx and sum of all these forces is zero as per the equilibrium equation which we find with the, the help of d Lambert's principle as we have been doing in the previous relations so now in this relation further this m naught x double dot and this m naught x double dot they cancel out and what we get on simplification is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to m naught e omega square sine of omega t mx double dot is inertia force cx dot is damping force kx is spring force when we compare this relation with the differential equation of vibration of a forced vibration system which is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f naught sine of omega t what we find is left terms which is the summation of inertia damping and spring forces same and right side is external excitation f naught sine omega t and with amplitude f naught comparing the right side of two equations sine omega t sine omega t is there f naught is a constant term now unbalanced system is m naught always its eccentricity is e let omega is its constant angular speed so it is a constant term so what we find is the relations are similar only f naught term takes the value of m naught e omega square so f naught takes the value of m naught e omega square and solution we can find out as we found for the forced vibration system now determination of a amplitude of vibration and phi phase difference in the previous slide we have found the relation to be mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to m naught e omega square sine omega t we have substituted in place of f naught m naught e omega square again a constant basically and constant amplitude of the external excitation a vertical component of the centrifugal force we know its solution is x is complementary solution plus particular solution complementary solution for most of the problems the system is under damped system and complement complementary solution is given by x is c e raised to power minus zeta omega t sine of and root 1 minus zeta square omega t plus phi 1. But this vibration amplitude, a vibration is there for some initial period only. This is transient vibration component in the vibration. After some seconds, it will vanish from the plot. And what we will have is x is arm is having only a particular solution and particular solution is of the type a x p is a is amplitude of vibration sine of omega t minus phi phi is the phase difference by which the system is lagging behind the movement of the external excitation in this case vertical component of centrifugal force omega is the angular speed of the rotating system so 
what we have is now for practical purposes solution x will be only having particular solution and a's value from force vibration system we know is equal to f naught by k in numerator and in denominator under root of 1 minus omega by omega and its square and this whole terms of square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n its whole square. Omega by omega n is the ratio of frequency of external excitation or frequency of rotation of the rotating system to the natural frequency of the system. And now substituting F naught value is equal to M naught e omega square in the numerator, what we get is this relation. Further, di dividing numerator and denominator by m, by m dividing here and multiplying here, we get this relation. Now, m by k, we can find out from the relation of natural frequency which is equal to k by m. So omega n square is k square by, uh, omega n square is k by m and m by k is 1 upon omega n whole square. Denominator term remains the same. When we substitute this, A becomes and we bring M naught E by M term here in the denominator on the other side. So the relation becomes A by M naught E by M is equal to omega by omega n whole square in numerator and denominator is same and root of 1 minus omega by omega n square its whole square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n its whole square zeta is the damping ratio. Now this term m naught m naught m cancels out dimensions cancels out only dimension terms and e, dimensions of a and e are the dimensions of length. So the left side is a dimensionless quantity. We have we find out ratio of amplitude of vibration to a term m naught e by m, and this is a dimensionless quantity given by the relation. Phase difference is same. Tan phi is two zeta omega by omega n divided by one minus omega n whole square as we calculated for particular solution in the problems of forced vibration of a spring mass damper system. So, once the angular speed omega is known, omega n, which is ratio and root of k by m, k stiffness element, mass is known of the system which is rotating is known, zeta. Damping ratio which has been introduced is known. We can find out A and phi and we know this. Now, complete response of a rotating system, a rotating unbalanced system is X is complementary solution XC plus XP in xp this term m naught e omega square by k divided by denominator term on root 1 minus omega by omega n whole square its whole square plus square of 2 zeta omega by omega n is a and solution is a sine omega t minus phi so phi we know as we calculated in the previous relation so, for most part, the solution will be particular solution with amplitude A and phase difference phi. Now, the upper plot shows the 
rotation of unbalanced system or rotation of vertical component of un uh, centrifugal force due to the unbalanced system because of the rotation so it is m naught e omega square its amplitude and it is following a sine curve with the angular frequency of omega so this amplitude is m naught e omega square we have substituted it to be f naught in the relations for force vibration system now particular solution will be lagging behind and again sine term omega same amplitude will be a and it will be lagging behind by phi relations for a and for phi we have calculated and solution is like this only thing is if we know this solution what we can do is by controlling the frequency ratio by controlling the mass if of course if we decrease e centrifugal force decreases and amplitude will decrease so and by introducing controlling the damping we can reduce a of the system amplitude of vibration of the system and make the running of an electric motor or a turbine smooth now at resonance we know external excitation frequency or angular frequency of rotating system is equal to the natural frequency of a m mass vibrating with the stiffness k now relation we know so when we put omega by omega n 1 when we put this omega by omega n 1 frequency ratio value 1 here and in denominators we get a amplitude which is a resonance amplitude when we solve this we get a resonance to m naught e you make m naught e by m is equal to 1 by 2 zeta or a resonance is m naught e by 2 m zeta here we have found for different zeta a resonance to m naught e by m at zero damping no damping it is undamped vibration system at resonance system will vibrate at at infinity amplitude theoretically when zeta is 0.15 it will vibrate with the amplitude amplitude to m naught e by m ratio 3.33 as we are introducing more and more damping say at 0.25 it becomes 2 and at 0.3 it becomes 1.67 at 0.5 it becomes 1 and at 1 it becomes 0.5 dimension less ratio of amplitude to m naught e by m term it continuously goes on decreasing with the increase in zeta now we plot a characteristic curve first characteristic curve is amplitude frequency response curve this is a plot between dimensionless number a to m naught e by m the term we have calculated and frequency ratio omega by omega n now what we observe is when zeta is zero no damping is there in the system plot is like this plot is like plot is like this plot is like this at resonance when omega by omega n is one amplitude of vibration will be infinity and for high values of omega by omega n say five or more than five 
the um, ratio term a to m not e by m dimensionless number approaches one near to one now as we are introducing zeta as we are increasing zeta damping ratio we are increasing amplitude of vibration will be decreasing for all values of frequency ratio omega to omega n same in this region when we are increasing say for this omega by omega n value we had this much a to m naught e by m say 2 for zeta 0 when we made damping ratio 0.15 amplitude decreased at 0.25 further decreased at 0.3 further decreased 0.5 further decreased and at 1 it is quite less similarly say omega by omega n is 2 as we are increasing zeta as we are increasing zeta a dimensionless term is reducing for all values of omega by omega now the next observation is at low speed when the angular frequency of the rotating system is very very less than the natural frequency of the system dimensionless number ratio of a to m naught e by m approaches zero for all values of zeta so this is the point means when the rotating mass is rotating at very slow speeds its amplitude of fluctuation is almost nil but when it is running at high speed means angular speed of rotating element is very high than natural frequency then this dimensionless number a to m naught e by m approaches one for all values of zeta basically effect of damping is negligible we are here say omega by omega n frequency ratio is 5 means uh, ang angular frequency of rotating system was 5 times the natural frequency of the vibrating system then this amplitude to m naught e by m ratio is 1 irrespective of the damping ratio. Now for practical design purposes, we want to operate in this region. In this region, we want to operate and to when we want to operate in this region so that the amplitude of vibration is min the minimum because we can't be at zero angular frequency we require certain speed then by use proper proper usage of gearbox we can reduce or increase the speed but for the vibration system it is advisable to work so it means omega should be larger than the natural frequency so it means omega to omega n value we want larger maybe near to four five or more is the better so i so when we are designing a rotating unbalanced system we can reduce the amplitude of vibration in the system by increasing omega angular frequency of the system or with uh, irrespective of uh, the damping ratio means little damping is good or we can decrease omega n so we want omega n to be low so for omega n to be low what we do in the design omega n is ratio of k to mass what we can do is increase the stiffness of the mat or the springs so means stiffness elements stiffness can should be increased increase the mass of the rotor rotating system means make the rotating rotors heavier 
though some eccentricity e will be there but it will reduce the amplitude of vibration to a very low values what we have observed in the characteristic plot is along the ordinate we have written this dimensionless number a to m naught e by m and z by b so basically for the chapter of force vibration this amplitude frequency response curve is same for a rotating unbalanced system and from the for the problem of support motion say a support of the spring mass damper system has been given an amplitude and it is moving with b amplitude uh, vibrating with b amplitude then the relative movement of mass with respect to base will also be uh, following a simple harmonic motion and its amplitude will be z this is again we will be referring to this amplitude frequency response curve in the problems of sport motion and sub article of relative motion in the coming lectures coming to the second characteristic curve which is phase frequency response curve between phase angle phi and frequency ratio omega by omega n this is same as we observed in the case of force vibration system a response of force vibration system for all values of zetas when omega by omega n is 1 we get a phase difference phi of 90 degree when zeta is 0 shown by red plot when omega is less than omega n we get a zero phase difference for all values where omega is greater than omega n we get 180 degree phase difference now suppose we are in the region where frequency ratio is 2 3 or higher values as we increase zeta or introduce damping into the system zeta value is increasing what we observe is the phase difference goes on decreasing for all values of omega by omega n greater than 1 with this the lecture on the response of rotating unbalanced system is complete Thanks, my dear students.